Brian, welcome to Definity. For those that don't know you, please start us off. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your project. Yeah, my name is Ryan. I'm the founder of Asha Labs. We are a business that's focused on offering data security infrastructure and engineering services to various Web3 projects. It's materialized in an interesting infrastructure that allows us to connect private and sensitive data to blockchains. And uh, we're building this on the ICP, so more than happy to dive into that and anything else you'd like to ask. Yeah. So essentially, you help projects bring outside data in, in a secure way onto ICP and also make it available for other blockchains, if I'm saying. Yeah. That is correct. That is correct. So we use these interesting cryptographic proofs that allow us to access private information like banking transactions or potentially even health data, uh, but also you know Oracle price data redact some information from that, verify it, and serve it to blockchains. And this helps businesses tap into data they wouldn't otherwise be able to get in a trust-minimized way. So describe to, you, to us a little bit about your journey into Web3. How, how did you end up looking at this particular problem or opportunity, so to say? Sure. So we started off with a marketing application, and we quickly realized through that we could hack our own data. You know, no one would know if we rewarded ourselves versus someone who'd, who was referring, for example. And so we went down that rabbit hole of how do we solve this data problem, coupled with the fact that we're better data engineers. And, and this was outside of ICP? Right? This was outside the ICP, except we quickly realized the ICP offered some compute capability that other blockchains couldn't, coupled with data portability. And this is why we use the ICP to sort of execute these uh, interesting computations that allow us to verify this data any, on any blockchain. Yeah as well as on the ICP. Yeah. Could you help us understand on a fairly high level the, the different components that are in play? Yeah, 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 sure. So you can think about this as a, as a network. You, you have this prover that's generating proofs about API requests, and that prover can then send that to the ICP for verification. So those are the core components in place. When we integrate you know, blockchains like Ethereum or Arbitrum, then we have an interesting way to take those proofs from ICP and send them. Yeah. There. So the proving doesn't happen on ICP. I guess that, that, that that's a CK proving process is way too intensive to run on in a smart contract or how does it work? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of bandwidth that it's, that's taking place off chain in this sort of multi-party computation protocol. Yeah. But the proofs that are generated off the back of that are then portable, right? I can generate 10 proofs of 10 different sources and then I can roll all of that up into a single outcome with a single proof on the IC or any, even in a ZK VM. So you can think about this more like a ZK roll-up for TLS attestations. Yeah. So in my ICP application, I sort of place my trust in the infrastructure that you have built and the nodes and the proofs, et cetera. Of course. And uh, the underlying cryptographic primitive is open source. We're actually forking Ethereum's privacy and research explorations uh, TLS notary. Yeah. And that allows uh, developers to come in and scrutinize the underlying tech. Um, but we're scaling that infrastructure. And that's not something anybody else is really doing. Yeah. In addition to providing this data points or the, the ability to move data securely onto ICP, I, I also understand that, that this is a process that makes collecting data much cheaper than, than currently. That's correct. That's correct. So ICP has an interesting feature called HTTP outcalls. It's like an oracle within the ICP network, meaning that each node on that network is making a single request. Now, the alternative here is we have one node making the request and generating a cryptographic proof associated to that request. And so we minimize the amount of requests being made as opposed to having every node create that request. And because with our infrastructure, you can do that in high frequency, high concurrency, we're actually trying to get to 1,000x concurrency, for example. So you get a lot of bandwidth that comes with that. And then ICP comes in for that verification and data processing layer. That old process, that alternative to the native Oracle on ICP, we like to call CKTLS. Yeah. It's like ZKTLS, but it's pushing to the IC and yeah, averaging. So it's a CK with a C and not a Z. Exactly right. Yeah. So chain key cri cryptography is being used instead of zero knowledge VMs. Yeah. So in, in addition to this whole process is way more efficient and faster and cheaper, you also get the verification, the proofs and the... Of course. So we shared a, a diagram recently that in indicated we could get about 90% cost reductions by using our infrastructure if we're requesting data in high frequency. So there's a trade-off here that we'd love to offer developers in the IC ecosystem where if you're indexing the world's data into your canister, then you might choose this alternative approach to doing that. So yeah, it's interesting to be here and share that information. Yeah, so before we finish this off, can you please share with us some of the, the sort of the latest developments and, and things that you look forward to going forward? Yeah, so big thanks to our business partners at the moment. We're working with, you know, Truflation, we're working with Chainsight to help them 
sort of verif bring their data verifiably on chain. Of course, and now we've recently, you know, are applying this infrastructure internally to help support this, you know, bridge between TradFi and DeFi. How do we get fiat and crypto sort of seamlessly moving in between each other? And off the back of that, we've had partnerships with the likes of Arbitrum and are backing by Outlier and so on. So it's an interesting uh, experience. So uh, thank you, Ryan. It's been great to hear, hearing about your project. I wish you good luck in the future. And I'm excited to eventually, you know, be able to use CKTLS as one of the, the main ways to actually get data from, from the outside world on, onto ICP. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks.